Let's see. Yeah, there we go. We're live. We live. We live. We out here. I can't see shit, can you? <laughs> I always get to see some of the comments. <laughs> Ryan Edwards, KFC. We're uh, we're gonna wait till uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Christian Serapis comes on here in a little bit. If we he got can figure some, it out. Yeah, if he can figure it out. <laughs> get some people. Oh, there, he is. there he is. He's always the first dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. And we get some other people uh, logging in. There we go, dude. He figured it out wow. quick. Technology, man. He's figuring. Technology master, right? Let's see uh, if it comes on. All right, internet. We got five G. We should be good. Oh, there she is. There he is. What's up, dude? What's up? <laughs> so, Christian Serapis, were you uh, working today at the shop, or what were you up to? Uh, no, no shop today. I was actually at my day job and beautiful Del Mar, California. So uh, just got home. Unfortunately, didn't make it to the shop today, but I guess we'll have to save that for another episode. Yeah, who doesn't love uh, Del Mar, California, though? <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Hey, have you ever eaten at, have you ever eaten at In Fuego on the coast there? No. Uh, am I like, Dude, seriously? you got to get down there. Or that was can't handle the hot stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. We'll call it uh, the cooler instead of the fire. <laughs> but, yeah, that place is my jam, dude. I love that place. <laughs> hey, so uh, we wanted to just have fun, a little fun with you today. Uh, we got a few people logging in right now. But we wanted to uh, kind of get, like, a Parker recap, talk about how uh, Ryan did at Parker, too. Maybe we'll make fun of both of you guys. But uh, <laughs> we, uh, we really wanted to see, like, what you guys thought of, I don't know what you want to call it, throwing yourself into the UTV. Uh, well, I mean, shoot, I've lost track of how many races. I think it's our fifth, but don't quote me on that. But, uh, yeah, I've got a pretty. Hey, you got a, like a little bit of a bad connection. I feel like Christian, the metal plate in your head is ruining your feed. There you are. Do you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Let me know if it, uh, the disconnect. But yeah, I mean, Parker was a definitely was a disappointment considering that uh, my brother and I had aspirations to run for a best in the desert points championship this year. Um, we're definitely still going to try and follow through with that. But I mean, we're at a pretty big, pretty big deficit, I'd say. Uh, the big guns like Mitch Guthrie, uh, I think I think he's watching. So what's up, Mitch? Uh, <laughs> what up, Mitch? Yeah, Phil, Phil Burton, uh, those guys, they're, it's going to be hard to make up points on those guys. So, I mean, all we got to do is really keep our heads up and just really at this point go for wins. Where were you guys running when you broke? Dude, you guys were ripping for a while. Yeah, so what's funny about that is like – so the plan was uh, that my brother Brett was going to start the race, and since the Parker 250 is so short that – um, there was really no need to really do a driver change. So we weren't really going to risk losing time changing drivers to just so I can drive when there was really no point. So we went along with that plan and then immediately almost ran into uh, clutch issues. So Brett was really managing the car the whole the whole race, essentially. Yeah, but you got to give yourself a little bit of credit, though, because, like, when he was driving and you guys were managing it, you were helping manage from the pits, letting him know what to do. And he still moved up, like, Dude, so many positions. Yeah, I mean, we started, I think, 25th or something or around there, and Brett was really ripping it. I mean, that car, even when it's, you know, having issues, it still goes pretty good. That's and a fast car, yeah. I know Brett was getting on the radio, like, begging for split. <laughs> actually, I'm not doing that bad, considering you're only really running the car 50 to 75%. I mean, what really killed us was he couldn't really run that fast in the high speed. But that was, was a lot of high speed out there. And I was With able you guys to wide open a lot of it, yeah, yeah, there was a lot of fast stuff. Yeah. So I was able to relay to him, I'll be like, Hey Brett, like when you get into the tight stuff, like you gotta go. Like it doesn't matter if you make a mistake or not, just that's where you're gonna make the time up because on the the high speed stuff it's really gonna be a wash. So right. how many sections were there that were super tight? Like were they like, I think like the first quarter was tight. The middle was all fast, and then the last quarter was tight. Oh, okay. So, like, coming up the wash was pinned. And were you pinned before that? No, before that, it was fairly tight and rocky. So, you're kind of creeping through it. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, 
Brett was managing the cl the clutch issues, and then we went from 25th to I, I think we were like sixth on the road halfway through, which I couldn't believe. And That's then right. we, then we had an insanely long uh, pit stop coming into uh, the start of the 17 seconds. I videotaped oh, it perfect. <laughs> perfect. George is on the ti the stop the clock timer. timer. Yeah. <laughs> on the scene, and we were uh, we were trying really hard to get the secondary clutch off, and I mean. Our, our shop guy, uh, Keith Mila, he's our crew chief. He does a phenomenal job building the car, and he, he, he's a trophy truck guy, so he really uh, still kind of new to the UTV stuff, and he was hitting the thing with a sledgehammer, and we, he actually just <laughs> our... Dude, Even Kenny was hitting it with a sledgehammer with a broken collar. Oh, see? Everyone it, so it. what – did Mila say what happened to it, why it wasn't uh, coming off? Um, I uh, – Guessing probably just the heat. Too much, sorry, beer man. How are those secondaries on there? Just with the bolt, or are they like uh, yeah, man. on there? They're just like splined on, yeah. Oh. Yeah, and they actually, just like the it was what it was welded on. Jesus. Yeah. So did yeah, you guys get it off when you got back to the shop? No, you're good. We can hear you. It seems yeah. like it's kind of sketchy. Are you on five yeah, uh, G or are you on Wi Fi? Uh, I'm on <laughs> Wi Fi, so maybe I should switch off. Hey, so you guys are question. Me. We got a question uh -oh. from Drew. He said, uh, who would win in a wrestling match, you or Brett? Oh, no doubt. Man. Oh, arm wrestling. I, arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. Oh, I thought it was straight wrestling. Oh, uh, either, either way, no, no doubt. No doubt me. But, <laughs> nice. But I think, I, think, I think Drew, I mean, I've seen Drew wrestle some people in some, be some unopportunistic uh, conditions, and I wouldn't want to go to it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give Drew that one. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So, but yeah. What's up, Lincoln? Lincoln yeah. just joined in. Hey, Lincoln, I want to go riding some one tens with you, bud. Ooh, yeah, dude, go shred. We need to get Christian on a dirt bike. Man. Yeah, what's your dirt bike status, dude? Are you ready to rip? He keeps asking me to take one of my bikes. I'm a little really on that one. Yeah, I don't think I have an interest. I think we start with the one ten. <laughs> let's do it. So, but yeah, it was a bummer for the race. Uh, what what eventually took us out was at the. I think mile nine at lap three, we had a hub hat fail. And oh, man. yeah, so after Brett was stuck in the desert for about an hour and a half, there's no way we were going to be able to change that part out and um, get him around for the last lap. So we had to call it. It's so one of the rad things that I saw them do, and I kind of thought this was, I don't know if like most ETV teams understand this stuff, but so I was over there at their pits and they were talking about how they were going to rescue the car. Right? right. And he was like, well, this other driver has already had his race done, right? So we can use him as the person to take the like part. a jump off point. Yeah. yeah. So, like, they had all of this stuff worked out in the pits, and I was like, "Holy shit, these guys are so much smarter <laughs> than whatever I know." That's why they're the professionals. Yeah, it was badass. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'll name the that guy Austin Wyland, who's been super helpful to gotcha. uh, yeah. to our program, and I have to give him a shout out because. When Brett and I originally got into the UTV game, uh, it's been very difficult to trust certain people because I would say probably the ratio is 80% of the people have steered us the wrong way for good reason or not. And then there's some diamonds in the rough that have really helped us out. I'm not going to name any names uh, besides the people but, that helped But out. Austin has the same car as you, though, right? No. Yeah, good dude. No, his is different. No, but he has a lot of the same parts. So he, he runs a lot parts as well gotcha yeah building a new car i believe tisco is building it but don't quote oh, me wow. on. hey so mila said that he needs to get himself he's putting in on a kmc camel hat oh shit uh, well i think christian's probably wearing it yeah oh dude <laughs> what we got a kmc camel hat right here yeah oh was this supposed to go to mila i'm sorry yeah that was mila sorry mila oh dude <laughs> i got one every color i got a full rainbow ryan well, that's why I sent out everything to the shop so Mila could get first dibs. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must have intercepted. <laughs> right on. I got FedEx tracking, baby. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, like, it was super cool to see all that, uh, I don't know, pit goodness, because I've never seen that before. Um, so I thought it was super cool to see all of it happen. And then, uh, like, understanding how you guys dealt with it, like, you know, you are clearly wanted to do better at the races. But seeing how you guys, like, managed it and did everything was pretty impressive, dude. Yeah, I mean, I got to give a huge uh, credit to our crew chief. Um, mentioned him before, Keith Mila. He's um, 
he's been around the sport for years. And like I said, he's, his wheelhouse is really prepping trophy trucks and working with those caliber guys. And I think a big advantage for, you know, Brett and I is that, I mean, the trophy truck class is the pinnacle of off-road and you always got to be off of your game uh, to compete against guys like Bryce Menzies, anybody with the last name McMillan. Um, it's, it's super tough to compete against those guys. So I think that kind of gives us a little bit of a leg up. Be on the uh, backside. A little bit of a leg up on the UTB competition, but unfortunately it hasn't really, hasn't really showed. I mean, uh, we had a really good plan at Blue Water a couple months ago and we were two miles away from fit from winning and a belt blew up at 191 degrees. And Oh man. Yeah. I'm not predicted that the car was running great all weekend. And I mean, the race the first day. Hey, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you know, but he's big trophy truck guy after big King trophy of the Hammer. Truck guy now. So. <laughs> uh Oh, I lost you guys again. Man, that, that spec truck felt like I was in a UTV. Really? Fuck. I'm still sore after that. <laughs> it just seems like it's so much different. Because, like, to me, it would be like driving a tank, but on cushions, right? I think when you're at speed in the trophy truck, it is. But the slow stuff just is rough. Would you agree, Christian? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, I took you for a ride, um, like, over a year ago. So what? what's your way truck, have yeah. Here, here's what you... Let's hear what you have to say first, and then I'll kind of elaborate on what you had to say. Yeah, I did he go wide open? Yeah, well, it, uh, the difference between a spec truck and a trophy truck is massive. Holy shit, massive! So was he tapped when he took you for a ride? Yeah, so the same truck we I raced in was their old spec truck. Oh, okay, but with a different engine. No, so yeah, it was a spec truck. Yeah, and it it's almost like driving that hard, it couldn't get on top of stuff. But the moment we were in that trophy truck, it was like anything over 60, we didn't feel. Dude, that's so bad. Yeah. You can never get to that point in a UTV, right? No. Like ever. No. Yeah, I mean, there's a pretty massive difference between um, trophy truck spec or 6100 and trophy two-wheel drive trophy truck. And then if you want right. to get even crazier, then the all-wheel drive is another level over the two-wheel drive. That's insane. And so... <laughs> so when Brett, when Brett and I get into the UTV, it's sort of uh, like we're driving go karts at K1 speed in a sense. It's just like, yeah. I mean, but that's it's kind of a detriment because in Trophy Trek you got to run so hard all the time. Um, I mean, when the guys say that like, you got to run 100 percent to have a chance, that's they're not really joking. And in UTV, uh, we're certainly not there yet. Like we definitely can't run 100 percent. If, yeah, 75, right. if, we, if we ran our car at 75% pace for a whole day, it, it wouldn't make it halfway. So okay. that's what really the biggest learning curve well, has been for like my, my brother. And I. You just have to figure out where the limit is, where the limit is. and like Blurton and Guthrie, like they know how hard, how far they can run those cars with, you know, broken pieces or without an axle or whatever. Like they've, they've tested it and brought it to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's because they've been doing it for so long. Correct. Thanks, Dirt Chronicles, for the yeah. compliment. I really appreciate that. They're not trophy truck guys per se, but they're not taking away any of their talent whatsoever. I mean, these, these guys are some bad mofos that have been in the UTV game for, like you said, for a few years, and those guys right. can drive. I mean, when you get, like, trophy truck, those guys are really good at what they do in their class but when you get down to the utvs those guys are really good at what they do too so i mean just for brett and i to be competitive in the utv class from a from a pay standpoint is just you know it's a it's a it's an honor to be you know in company like that dude i feel like it's good though too because we always talk about this like when i first started racing utvs in short course coming from moto you like have a practice bike and a race bike right, right? so you're like always practicing you just you trash your practice bike now there's the ability to race UTVs when you're not in a trophy truck because it's cost so much money to put a trophy truck on the track. You can still get practice. Yeah. In the field, yeah. You know? Yeah. At least be out and there that, in the dirt. Yeah. And that's really why we kind of started racing UTVs in, in the first place was um, it's just the blatant obvious. It's a fraction of the cost from a trophy truck standpoint. Um, and then the competition, like I mentioned, is second to none. I mean, there's there's ten guys that you know Dude. can win. I'm not going to name yeah. them all. 
now just because hey, you, know, you, you never know. <laughs> it's just like Supercross right now. Like, you don't know who's ever going to take that win. I kind of feel like that, too. Like, right. look at um, – not that he won or anything, because Mitch won, and that was awesome that he won. But Dustin Jones came from, I think, like almost last yeah, all the way up third. to a podium position. Yep, and then same with the, the Binquist car, the BDI car. They were – Oh, were they starting way back? Yeah, too? I mean, they were in the middle of the pack, I think. Hey, so what happened to you? Shit. <laughs> what did, you <laughs> did you finish, Ryan? Yeah, we finished. Uh, we were running. We were in front of Shock Therapy. Dude, big five, media guy right here, though. I was all pissed because they finished in the fucking dark. I couldn't I get know. any pictures. And they had no lights there. Uh, <laughs> leaving Midway. I owe you some gas, by the way, Christian, but we'll we'll square up later. Um <laughs> leaving midway uh explain we, uh i took some of your gas at midway but yeah. it's, it's no big deal <laughs> dude his right foot was so heavy he was just like draining gas out of that yeah thing. we took another five gallons but um yeah we left midway and the clutches started slipping blew a bell changed it went again five minutes in blew another bell and realized i think the primary was sticking so we had to limp it in but I think the second belt had blown and shock therapy went by us. So we were leading all the three lap cars. Really? Yeah. By like five minutes. Dude, you I've were heard that. I've, I've, I've heard that story before. We were yeah. leading until we were leading. And then, well, at least, it, <laughs> hey, at least it wasn't a broken ball joint and I didn't finish. So at least I can tell that yeah, story now. Dude, your level is like <laughs> stepping up like yeah. every race, right? You got it. I know we're gonna see we're gonna see Ryan and Pro Turbo before we know it. Shit! <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the elevation of this UTV game, well, if Ryan's getting into Pro Turbo, he's gonna have to go test one first to make sure. Yeah, we we might need to get a car together. <laughs> uh, it was all about just uh, all, all about his pit crew. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy brought over there, not knowing how to use the radio, but. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. We, dude, I remember seeing him on the radio, and he thought you were talking. And it was, yeah, that's he, what I'm talking about. But it wasn't you. It was uh, or it was you, and it, he thought it was uh, James. James, yeah. yeah. I told him like three times, James is broken. He's not coming in. Hey, so that's a totally different level that I was talking about, about your pit crew that's versus the regular pit UTV crew. pit crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were upper and lower echelon. We went both ways on that one. <laughs> right, so Manny says, uh, wait until more of the NA guys come up to the – through the ranks i agree with that too and you know what's really cool about it is now best in the desert has all these stepping stones so you can like try the utv class or excuse me the rally class right and then you can go to na and then like you can keep cruising yeah out. it's gonna keep the sport moving in the right direction yeah you can not everybody can do like christian and his brother did no so hard right, go up. right into yeah. it yeah oh we had an ass backwards <laughs> yeah you did. you're pretty good at doing that christian <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so the real question everybody wants to know is, uh, what's the best taco shop down in Del Mar? In Del Mar, oh uh, man! And if, if you're serious about getting tacos, you're not you're, you're not going to Del Mar. You're going. <laughs> That's too white people. Close to the port. You're going to Chula Vista. You're going to Taco Puerto. You're going to El Indio in Old Town. I mean, you're going. Dude. You're going to come to the real spots. I think Have George you been to El Indio. Yeah, hey, I've been to dude. El Gordo. It's oh. fucking amazing. El Indio is off the chain too. <laughs> hey, Mike Gardner, what's up, dude? Uh, it's, <laughs> excuse me, tacos is like one of my jams. So next... you might need to take a tour with you, Christian. Yeah. I mean, some of you LA guys, I mean, if you, if you, they probably know that uh, King Taco is pretty good too. So. Yeah. Hey, what's the name of the taco place that is in Santa Ana right there? That was the one I went to that you're like, that's oh, spot. Los Reyes. That's, Dude. That's Jimmy's spot. Yeah. spot. Oh, is it? Uh, that is a hole in the wall if you've ever been to there. Are you guys going to do it? Manny said you might as well go down to Ensenada. Yeah, that's true. But, <laughs> hey, that actually leads me to a good question, though. Are you guys going to do any races in Mexico in the UTV? Uh, UTV, definitely not. Um, it's it's hard enough trying to convince the trophy truck program to go down there. But um, on the schedule for us this year, no Mexico. Um, I'd like that's to find a, ride. a ride, right? I'd like to find a ride for the Peninsula run this year. I mean, I was fortunate enough to do it with Chris Miller and the Cantina team last year. And uh, this year, I'm not really, you know, held down with anybody. So I'm fielding almost all offers. If whoever wants to uh, call me a serious <laughs> speaker, I'd like to do Christian got a wanted ad, need ride for Mexico. The wife's bike, never ridden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually yeah. cool, though, that you 
that you can do that because a lot of people can't do that. Every time they put out a wanted ad, they're like, "Hey, fuck this guy." Yeah, yeah no, it's too amateur. But that's actually like yours is yeah. legit, so that's pretty. Yeah, rad. I have the resume to go behind it. But I'm I'm pretty picky on who I would go down with just because it's it's so much time away from not only you know my family, my girlfriend, work. Um, I wouldn't really entertain going down there unless I could win overall. And hey, so there's only. Like the trophy truck of- that you guys were talking about, I think he just joined in. Oh, Will's on. What's up, Will? Oh, Will Heaton. You should get him on the show. The Wolf of Wall, or what do they call him? The Wolf of Real Estate. <laughs> oh, he's in real estate. <laughs> yeah, he's who I aspire to be. <laughs> yeah. So we all inspire. Hey, so we are. Have you guys ever done short course? I know Ryan kind of like dabbled. Yeah. For a minute. Um. The only short course experience that my brother and I had was when we started in trophy carts when we were 12. Fun fact about it is we were in the original first ever trophy truck or trophy cart race in 2006. Like, no way, dude. Oh, gee. Sheldon Creed, the Sheldon Creed's weren't in that race. Mitchell DeYoung wasn't in that race. It was, I'm talking OG, OG. Like Zane Smith was, was our like biggest competition back then. Dude, that's so sick. Yeah. Then that was like before UTVs like started getting. Yeah, heavy. like trophy cart was gonna be Ryan, the Peter. Ryan had like just come out. Wow. So, so yeah, that was like before Mitch Guthrie did trophy carts. Like we were in the OG OG race, which sort of my career has gone downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> you were at the peak at like six. Yeah, yeah I, peaked, I peaked at ten years old. Trying to get back to that. All these motocross dudes are peaking at like 25, but he peaked at six. Yeah, way ahead again. You'll get back there. So Manny said, uh, "You KMC boys killed it. Uh, Keep going, dudes." Honestly, not to give a shout out to the KMC guys because I'm sitting here next to one, but there really was. There was a shitload of KMC wheels out there that I saw, and all those dudes were like, their teams were trying so hard to make sure that those dudes finished and like towards the top. And it's cool to have Christian and their team bringing that caliber because it makes a makes kmc look like a a top tier brand like it is hey jessica just chimed in too and said didn't you guys race uh against a bunch of big teams in the trophy carts uh big like the terrible herbs were were pretty prominent back in there i mean victory trophy cart <laughs> pretty big i'm trying to remember like i didn't know i was gonna have a walk back into history but <laughs> Most of the big guys that you would think um, from that came from trophy carts, like the Sheldon Creeds, the Jarrett Brooks, the the Mitchell DeYoungs, like they weren't they weren't even around yet. So it, it was they were crazy. Born. They were pioneers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it's a uh, short course is definitely a different driving style if you if we want to you know really talk about what hey. it takes to be good at short course. So low key, I kind of do want to drive a trophy cart one of these days. Those things just look so badass. Yeah, the ones with the even, in it. I don't even know if, like any of us could fit in one now. Nah, yeah, I don't think so either. A couple drinks in me, I'd probably get in there. <laughs> You'd stick your your one leg out and you have your other leg bent in there. Uh, okay, we'll do a white claw wrap just in honor of perfect. you, Christian. <laughs> My beer. My dad hated that rap, by the way. That was a like, really. Yeah, that was the best. One. It was so good, dude. That rap was sick. Hey, Jessica said they have Pudios. Oh. Oh, that's right. How, to, how could I have forgot about them? Yeah. Wait, thanks, Jessica. Thanks for. Uh... Yeah. Thanks for being the brains of this operation. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, we, Jessica. Do you know any other stuff that we're not talking about yeah, that might help us out here? Uh, feeding this in here. Host, host of the Dirt Life Show, Jessica. <laughs> hey, so. What like after you go through all that stuff and then they like just throw you in the desert? Were you thinking white claw rap right off the bat? Uh, when we when we first got into desert racing, when you started doing the yeah. Well, it was the Coors Light well, truck first, first, right? Or no, the Pacifico truck. Well, when we started in the desert, we started in Trophy Light, and my dad was not like he was kind of like towing the line of we were underage. We like 15 when we did our first off-road race so we didn't want to put a beer on the truck so we put body armor because oh. we were t- uh the sports drink body armor then and eventually got rid of it and then we moved up to 6 to 100 when we were still juniors in high school and then that's when we put the pacifico and the corona on the truck and i haven't really looked back since i mean i think it's pretty, <laughs> so it's pretty i think uh ryan is the first title sponsor kmc that wasn't a beer Really? 
and yeah, Derek, Ryan, I'm talk re- about I'm Ryan replacing Derek. in a beer, you know? Dude, hell yeah. Time. Hey, so he's big White Claw guy. I would way rather have Pacifico, so I'm going with the Pacifico wrap. Did you ever season. see the Pacifico wrap? Uh, yeah. Uh, I thought that was, that was legendary. legendary. We had a couple Manny. other people chime in. Jessica said, no problem. Manny is laughing. <laughs> and then uh, thanks, Boone, for the compliment. Really appreciate it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. What was your favorite rap? Oh, I'm probably just don't get them started on raps. What I've had yeah. some conversation about raps. Dude, look at this. this rap was a conversation all day already. You gotta see, I mean, dude. This rap. We, we hey, could man. write a. Book. We could write a book on raps that we have in our email that never yes. made. It. And I'd probably. It's a brand that uh, I think represents excellence. There's nobody that talks on the caliber of athletes in KMC are the pinnacle of the sport. To be able to be with elite guys like Matthews, uh, Chasey Curry, Andy McMillan, Mitch Guthrie, Dustin Jones, Seth Cotero. Oh my God, we're talking about like the best guys like in the sport. So just to be able to be with guys like them, it's just, it's, it's an honor. Bro, you missed a couple. You missed Ryan Edwards, George Hamill, James Hill. <laughs> like, we're at top echelon, dude. <laughs> You're the top echelon. Hey, so uh, the, Mo- the Mobbin guys just commented in and said the uh, course got hammered for the fourth by the for the fourth lap. Oh, yeah. Well, KMC shout out to Mobbin. They, they took the yeah, Mob- win, too, on KMC. Oh, did they? Yep. Did you hear of any carnage out there? Like, people just Dude, there were them? cars everywhere. Really? Everywhere. There was one car way down in a ditch. I don't even know how he got down there. And really? then they just left it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's so gnarly. Yeah. Did you hear about the car at KOH that had to get uh, uh, helicoptered, helicoptered out? Yeah. Were yeah. you the one telling me about that? Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. Oh, we were, Jessica we were... said she loved the White Claw rap. I did. The White Claw <laughs> rap was rad. But all Christian's rap ideas come from, like, Formula One. Uh, oh, so oh, you're, like, the right. creative right. behind the raps? Oh, yeah. Right. You're not going to get a rap by him. Brett is the big Formula One guy. I don't oh, really, I don't care too much about, about Formula One. But uh, the other, like, I think the White Claw was, was unique because it was sort of getting a trend. So I feel like we we couldn't do that rap again. Then. Like talking about it. Well, you, did, you yeah, went all out with that too. You had suits, everything. Yeah. Yeah. George accidentally. Yeah, the locked. white the white claw was unique, but I mean, he locked the phone. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, full disclosure. I was design, trying to turn out the design volume, that I've, Sorry. <laughs> I mean, full disclosure. A design that I mean, I, I have no problem sharing. A design that, I that continuously gets shot down is I want to do a Coors original design, and yeah, uh, just because I don't think. I, God, it'd be so rad. <laughs> I think it'd be rad. I mean, you don't really see a beige and navy blue uh, car out there. Uh, the beer man. Is, I mean, uh, is, it's in your guys' wheelhouse, that's for sure. But a lot of people still love yeah, the course. Mobbin said, yeah, Mobbin said there was lots of carnage on the course, too. So how many UTVs, yeah. sorry to switch subjects, but how many UTVs finished then? Like I don't half, know. half the field or something? I, I felt like every you guys crossed the finish line though, right, Christian? No, they didn't finish. No. Oh, you didn't. I saw him no, sitting on the didn't. side of the track when I was doing about ninety-five Did you miles throw an a hour. Shout out? Yeah. Yeah. All right, dude. But- it's gonna be like half an hour. I know you got to eat. We're gonna go get tacos. Okay. Oh, dude, yeah, no. banquet. Yeah, that's what they called that old Coors thing. Yeah, right? that's what he, they. That's what he was saying. If he if he could do a banquet wrap on the car, that would be hands down the best one dude it would dude that's all right let's just pretend like you never said it so you can surprise everybody <laughs> beer man will find out you heard it just first on... this here. <laughs> if, if that just... you heard it first all right so i i think we got the worst idea now just gonna leave this here at zima rap oh Jeez, terrible that's, that's, that's horrible <laughs> terrible so dustin yeah nah <laughs> no zima raps bro <laughs> yeah and no ice either no ice We're no not definitely ice. not Dude, all right. Well, hey, thanks for joining us, dude. Hey, we should have you on the show, like, be the featured guest one of these days if you're down. Yeah, let's do it. I'm all for it. I just got to get Brett. I'm thinking full 
full tour. Yeah, you want to do a full tour? Maybe I could come down to Del Mar and show you guys some of the real taco shops down there. Oh, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> no, I'm serious, though. Uh, if you're down, we could come down to the shop and hang out. Yeah, let's do it. I'm all for it. Just give me a date. Unfortunately, uh, it's just going to be me because Brett is off to bigger and better things up in Northern California. So getting him is going to be pretty tough, but I wish him well. He's, he's we holding him anyways. It's all right. What is he doing, being <laughs> bougie? He's the better looking twin, but it's all good. I know that he, dude, he had some pretty like bougie sunglasses on at the races. <laughs> it's, dude, it's, it's Formula One guy. I, I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> that, those were Formula One guys. Oh, he thinks, well. he thinks he's racing Formula One. He, he, he needs, needs more carbon fiber than He needs more <laughs> carbon. <laughs> hey, all and right. He, well, hey, thanks, homie. You want to give a shout out before we bail? Just some shouts out. I mean, just to you and Ryan from just being really awesome guys it's just <laughs> awesome. hey we're here for you christian hey i want to give a shout out to all the people that love tacos all right homie appreciate it man all right see ya later, later. Christian. that was a good one here you guys can check out this wrap before uh before we totally leave look at this freaking design man <laughs> this guy killed it all right tried. hey thanks homie thank you all right thank you guys for joining we really appreciate it we'll see you guys soon